In this tutorial, I'll teach you everything you need to know about non-base 10 systems. To give you a good understanding of this, let's discuss what a base 10 system is, and then from there we can contrast. So in a base 10 system, which is what we use currently, place values correspond to powers of 10. So let's say you have the number 26. 26 is the same thing as saying, well, we have the ones place value, we can write down this six as six times 10 to the power of zero. And in the tens place value, we have two times 10 raised to the power of one. Adding the product of these two will give you 26. Two times 10 is 20. And six times 10 to the power of zero, remember that is equal to one. Six times one is six. You see, 20 plus six is 26. Now, what if we don't want to use the base 10? And instead, we want to use something else, something generic, and in this case, we're saying the base B. Place values that correspond to powers of base B can be written generically, let's use 26 again, like this, where we have two times B to the power of one plus six times B to the power of zero. And we can replace B with any base that you like. Now there are some common non-base 10 systems out there and they're shown underneath. We have base five, base eight, base 16, and base two, which is binary. In this particular video, we'll be focusing on base five. Base five uses digits between zero and four to represent any number. In the base five system, we start by counting one, two, three, and four. And of course, you can start at zero. Here's how we write up to 10 in base five. So the number one is simply one, two, three, and four are no different. And I almost forgot, remember we have zero. If you wanna write down the number five, we write down 10 and we write down the subscript five. Now, how does that work? Remember, this is the same thing as saying one, times five raised to the power of one plus zero times five raised to the power of zero. The product of this is five and the product of this is zero. If I wanna write down the number six, I say one, one, subscript five, and you get the idea. One, two, subscript five, one, three, sub five, one, four, sub five. Now, in case you got confused, let's say I want to figure out what 14 sub five actually equals to. That's the same thing as saying one times five raised to the power of one plus four times five raised to the power of zero. One times five raised to the power of one is five and four times five raised to the power of zero, that's like saying four times one, which is nine. If you sum these up, you get nine. Finally, to write down the number 10, we say two, zero, sub five, and the same logic applies. So to write down numbers between zero and 10 in the base five system, here's how it's done. Now for the rest of this video, we'll be answering questions based on what we just learned. I know what we just learned was a little bit, but we can use this theory to apply to these questions very easily. Let's begin with question one. Convert 4,302 sub five to decimal notation. Let's go ahead and do this. We have four place values here. So this four, I'll write down question one. So this four is four times five raised to the power of three. This is zero, one, two, three. In terms of the powers for the factor five plus three times five raised to the power of two, plus zero times five raised to the power of one, plus two times five raised to the power of zero. The product of these, four times five to the power of three, remember that is equal to 125. So four times 125 is 500. Three times 25 is 75. Zero times anything is zero. And two times five to the power of zero, which is equal to one, two times one is two. 
Adding these all up, we get 577. That's the answer to question number one. In question number two, write 384 as a base 5 numeral. For this, it actually helps to know the powers of 5. So we have 5 to the power of 0 is 1. 5 to the power of 1 is 5. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. And 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Anything larger than 125 will not divide into 384. So we don't worry about 5 to the power of 4. It's not going to go that far. We will be using 125 because that's the largest of these that will divide into 384. I'll take 125 and divide it by 384. And I'll just make some more room. Again, this is for question two. How many times does 125 fit into 384? I believe it's three times. So it will fit three times comfortably. From here, we need to find out what the remainder is. I know that it fits three times, but what is the remainder? 125 times 3 is 375. Taking that away from 384 gives us 9, a remainder of 9. Now, why is that important? Well, we need to write the next number in line. And since the next power in line is 2, and that equates to 25, that's larger than 9. So for this power, we will write down 0. For this power, we will write down 3. Now we move on to the next lower power, which is 1. And that does fit into 9. How many times? 5 fits into 9 once, with a remainder of 4. So the next number is 1. And remember, there's a remainder of 4. So for the units, how many times does 1 fit into 4? 4 times. We have 3, 0, 1, 4, sub 5 is the same thing as 384. Let's move on to question number three. This time they want us to add 3, 4, 2, sub 5 plus 2, 2, 3, sub 5. Now you think that it would be appropriate to change this to decimal notation and then change it back to base 5 numerals, except you don't need to do that. There's an easier way to add these up without having to convert. Here's what you do. Much the same way you add numbers normally, we will do the same thing here. We have 3, 4, 2, sub 5 and 2, 2, 3, sub 5. And just to make reference, this is question 3. And we are adding. Remember, with the base 5 system, you don't write down numbers between 0 to 10. It doesn't work that way. You go from 0 to 4, and then you have 10, sub 5, 11, sub 5, and so on. So you have to keep that in mind when you do this. For example, 2 plus 3 Normally, you would think in the decimal notation, the answer is 5. But in this case, remember, 5 is 10 sub 5. So instead of writing 5, as you normally would, you would write down 0 for this digit, and you'd carry the 1. Then we have 1 plus 4 plus 2. Normally, you would say 7, but you can't write down 7. Remember, 7 is... That's 6, that's 7, it's 12 sub 5. So we will write down 2 and carry the 1. 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6. That's the same thing as 11 sub 5. And since there are no more numbers to add, we'll simply write down 11. So 11, 20 sub 5. That's the answer to this addition problem. Now we still have a few more questions, questions 4 through 6. And in the next example, we have to subtract 4, 2, 4, sub 5 minus 1, 4, 3, sub 5. Let's go ahead and figure this out. OK, to subtract these, we do it as we normally would, where we take 4 minus 3, that's 1. Now 2 minus 4 doesn't work. 2 is smaller than 4. So we borrow 1 from the number on its left, and that becomes 3. And this 2 becomes 12. Remember, we are dealing with 12 sub 5, which is equivalent to 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. And finally, 3 minus 1 is 2. So the number 2, 3, 1, sub 5 is the difference between these two numbers. Let's continue with question 5. 
In question 5, we need to multiply 1, 3, 4, sub 5 times 3, 2, sub 5. Let's do our work up here. So 1, 3, 4, sub 5 times 3, 2, sub 5. We multiply 2 times 4. So we're multiplying like this, and then 2 times 3 and 2 times 1. 2 times 4 is 8. Now I know you're probably tempted to write down 8 here, but you do have to write it down in base 5. So 8 in base 5 is 13 sub 5. We'll take this 3 and write it down and carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 7, remember, is 12 sub 5. So I'll write down 2 and carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 3. Next, we'll take 3 times 4. Remember, 3 times 4 is 12. What is 12 in base 5 notation? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Remember, 20 sub 5 is 10. So 12 would be 22 sub 5. We'll place this 2 right here and carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 11. 11 is 21 sub 5. So we'll write down 1 and carry the 2 again. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. Now we can't write down 5, of course. 5 is written down as 10. So I'll write down 10 and then add these up. 3 plus nothing is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. And the rest we write down as 1, 0. So 10, 4, 4, 3, sub 5 is the product of these two numbers that are in base 5. Finally, we move on to question 6, where we have to perform the division of this number with that number. Now this is our divisor. So if we were to represent this in long division, we would have 23 sub 5. And inside here, we have 4, 1, 3, 2, sub 5. When it comes down to dividing, numbers that are in base 5, it helps to write down the multiples of the divisor. So we have 23 sub 5 times 0, that's equal to 0. 23 sub 5 times 1 is itself. 23 sub 5 times 2. Remember, we're multiplying the same way we did in the previous example. So I would write down 23 sub 5 times 2 2 times 3 is 6, and that's represented as 11. So I'll put the 1 here, and then carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. We can't write down 5, instead we would write down 101 sub 5. We'll do this for a few more. So 23 times 3, and 23 times 4. This should equal to 124, and this one equals to 202. You'll see why this is important as we do the question. So how many times does 23 fit into 4? It does not, so we take both of these at the same time. How many times does 23 fit into 41? If you take a look, 23 sub 5 times 1 is less than 41, whereas 23 sub 5 times 2 is greater than 41, so it fits once. 1 times 23 sub 5, the answer is 23 sub 5. So we write that in and we subtract these. Now we subtract them the same way we subtracted in one of our previous examples. So you can't subtract 3 from 1 because it's bigger than 1. So we borrow from this 4. If we borrow from the 4, it becomes 3 and that becomes 11. 11 sub 5 is the same thing as saying the number 6. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And 3 minus 2 is 1. Now we bring down this 3. How many times does 23 fit into 133? Looking at these multiples, it is 3. 3 times 23 is 124. Again, we subtract. Subtracting these, you should get 4. Now we bring down this 2. 
23 fits how many times into 42? Once. So 1 times 23. Again, we subtract 23 sub 5 from 42. I'm running out of room here, so I apologize. But if we subtract these, you should end up with 14. 14 sub 5. Therefore, this is the quotient for our division statement. And this is the remainder. Together, that is the answer that you would report for question six. And there you have it. That concludes part one of our series on understanding non-base 10 systems. In part two, we will be looking at base eight, base 16, and binary, and answering some similar questions to those that we did in this video.